You're watching The Express, and we have more from Capilano's Cliff Walk after this trip into space. The Hubble Space Telescope, cutting edge technology, which is still giving us images uh, uh, better than anything else from out in space. But as everything, time marches on, and there are new versions and new telescopes that are going out into space and being readied as we speak. Now, the, the latest is uh, something called the James Webb Telescope, and Reminder uh, is going to explain why the James Webb Telescope is a little bit different than the Hubble Space Telescope, it takes pictures in a different way, different size, and there's a Canadian connection. So... James Webb Telescope. Well, it's uh, the Hubble is an optical UV infrared telescope. So it sees things the same way that, say, you and I would? And a bit of an extension. Okay. Uh, the James Webb is pretty much an exclusively infrared telescope. Now, infrared is the same thing that operates my TV at home, right? Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, this is a little bit wider, a bit of a longer range. Um, it's It's got primarily different science goals. So the main reason is uh, in, this, in our galaxy, there's a lot of gas and dust. In infrared light, you can pierce right through that. Let's see two images. Let's look at a, a Hubble image. We've got one here, a Hubble image, and this is the James Webb version of the same thing. So, so this is the Hubble Deep Field. Okay. It's one of the, the most famous images uh, taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. And this James Webb uh, Telescope image here, it's a, a simulation. So it's clearly showing thousands and thousands and thousands more galaxies. That's, that's amazing. I mean, you can really see the difference. I mean, you can still see the outline of where that where that dust is, mm -hmm. and you know it's the same image, but it really does really does look quite a bit different. Yeah. Here's a Hubble Space Telescope image of a nebula, uh, taken in uh, UV and optical light. But uh, when the web takes it, it should see something similar to this. This is an infrared image, and notice how it's able to pierce through the gas and dust, and now you can see the stars being formed, and you can, including, you can see the, uh, the jets that are coming from the central star in this nebula. You can see uh, the, some of the older stars. You can pierce the universe back uh, be well before Hubble could possibly see the things. Okay. Um, the other thing is it's got a neat orbit. It's about a million and a half kilometers away from the Earth. And the reason why it's there is... Uh, uh, it's an infrared telescope, so in infrared light, uh, the Hubble, the, the telescope itself emits uh, heat, and that will that causes a lot of noise, and your images aren't very clear. But uh, having it a million and a half kilometers away from the Earth, it's able to block out the sun, the moon, and the Earth all at the same time. And uh, and on one side of the telescopes, uh, it's a few, it's about 100 degrees Celsius. On the other side, it's close to uh, absolute zero, about uh, minus 250 degrees. And again, quite a bit bigger. Hubble is about the size of a school bus and the James Webb. The mirror alone is about six and a half meters, meters in length. So, so this is really going to be fantastic. And hopefully might even be able to show us back far enough in time to, to unlock some of those mysteries of the, really how we all got here. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I, I rode my bike. But I mean, in the bigger scheme of things, how we all, how we all actually got there. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's great information. Uh, for The Express, I'm Cam Cronin here at the Space Center. I'm Reminder Samra. And uh, happy looking up into the stars. If you'd like to win a family pass to the H.R. McMillan Space Center, be the first correct emailer now, the express at shaw.ca, to name the telescope that's replacing the aging Hubble one. And good luck to you. You're watching the Express, and it's time now to talk tasty wedding trends. Carrots Wedding Bells is brought to you by Carrots, online at carrots.com. Hi, I'm Aubrey. And I'm Sarah. And we are the Wedding Bells. I just got engaged. And I did not. We're on an adventure to plan the big day. Different drinks are used to mark different occasions. Champagne to celebrate, beer to barbecue. For Sarah's wedding, we met mixologist Jacob Sweetapple at the Fairmont, educating us in how to create custom cocktails for her big day. Signature cocktails, which is kind of this thing that people have at weddings now, which I love the idea. So I want a bride drink and a groom drink. When you are going to design a drink for someone, do you ask them what alcohols they like, or do you just get a feel for who they are? I definitely like their, their likes and dislikes. So whether they're very, you know, outdoorsy. I really like things girly, my ring is pink, I like everything pink. Okay, maybe fun. not outdoorsy, but Jacob knew what to do. We're gonna do a uh, sparkling cocktail. Um, served in a champagne flute. It is summertime, we've got um, access to amazing fresh berries. We've all had those cocktails that are too sweet, and we've had those ones that are too sour. So getting a nice even balance makes for a nice drink. This is just 
just so neat because it's a, a whole other experience for your guests to have a custom cocktail. It's not just your go get a beer. And I believe the wedding's in California, so we're going to use a little uh, Californian brute. Ta-da! And now to name it. The Pink Crinoline. And Sarah taste tested over and over and over again. Cheers. And now for the groom's drink. I want to do a surprise groom's corner at the wedding where we have a bar set up where they, we're going to serve whiskey and they're going to smoke cigars. I've actually just worked on a cigar infused scotch for uh, a new cocktail. That sounds like it wouldn't taste good. So how do you do an infusion? We cut down the middle of the cigar and we let it soak in a jar with a scotch seal there tied for a couple of hours and then we strain all the tobacco leaves back out. A good friend of mine said the other day that some of the best cocktails come from accidents. So. Or from five in the morning when all you have left. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute, what do we have? Okay, maybe just three in the morning. Oh, bride and groom. This is called a smoking noble. It's good because it's really sort of sweetie fruity at the beginning and then ugh, the scotch hits your bread at the end. And you can it's smell nice. the smokiness almost. Yeah, on, it's the, really on the back end. Then it was time to make a drink for the wedding bells. I'm a little bit more of a dirty martini, cracking a beer can kind of girl. And I like pims and wine. We're gonna take it into the sort of the premium range of products and uh, I was thinking of using all French. <gasps> May we suppose to say in bonny day. Some beautiful cognac. We're gonna use some uh, beautiful botanical chartreuse made by the monks um, and an infusion of about 130 different herbs and spices. Secret to the rest of the world. Similar to the Da Vinci Code. <laughs> Voila. It's so good. All three drinks were amazing, and we named our drink... La Belle. La Belle. When you translate it means the beauty. No matter where my guests end up in the world, if they have this drink, they'll always be at my wedding. For Shaw TV, we're the wedding bells. Carrots Wedding Bells has been brought to you by Carrots, online at carrots.com. The drinks look tasty, but I'm not so sure about the menu. Next week on the Wedding Bells segment, find out why Sarah's considering serving dog food on her big day. You're watching The Express, and we're talking tourism up next. Coming up... Every single process throughout the whole entire project was always about limiting our footprint on the environment. Eco-innovation at Capilano's Cliff Walk. It's a little fancier than what you would find, especially at that time period in this area of Prince George. Hubble history just outside of Prince George. The Express, we are your local voice. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by... Hairstyling and color services for Shaw TV, provided by The Lounge Hair Studio. Loungehairstudio.com Welcome back to the Express at Capilano Suspension Bridge for their new attraction, Cliff Walk. Now, not only is this about the heights and the narrow walkways, but it also takes you into previously unexplored areas of the park and teaches you a thing or two as well. For me, it was, I've never found it before. And when I went down there, it's probably how tropical it felt. You never see that anywhere really around the West Coast. And we found this area that was this own little microcosm at Capilano, and it's absolutely spectacular in terms of the mosses and the ferns and how lush they are. And I knew that what we were looking at was absolutely spectacular, but the last thing you wanted to do was ruin it before you, you had the guests there. The main purpose of this whole walkway was because we were surveying guests and we did some focus groups and they all said they wanted to learn more about the river and granite and all of that jazz. So we have built the whole system basically to teach them that. They get better views of the river. All of the signage gives information about the salmon, the flora and fauna, as well as the 160 million year old granite we're on right now or attached to. And then up top here during the exhibit uh, exit, there's a lot of information about the salmon and more about the trees and how they survive. This will be an amazing spot to watch the salmon run as long as I don't slip off and end up swimming with the fishes. 
Every single process throughout the whole entire project was always about limiting our footprint on the environment. We always went back to the drawing board to make sure that our connection points were as small as possible as the engineer would let us, and that was imperative for the whole entire walkway. We want to protect this area, we really do. We want to show off all of Capilano, all of the park to visitors from around the world. That's why they come. They want to see these beautiful trees. So that was definitely a number one priority for us. For more eco-education, you can take one of the guided tours that run every half hour here at Capilano Suspension Bridge and learn about our temperate West Coast rainforest. Right now on the Express, it's a little history lesson from Gold Rush time with today's road trip. Travel along with us on the Quality Assured Collision Road Trip as we explore the many marvelous attractions and activities of beautiful British Columbia. On today's Quality Assured Road Trip, we visit the historic Hubble Homestead located 40 kilometers north of Prince George. Hubble Homestead was built at the beginning of a shortcut over land used by settlers traveling north by water. The homestead saw a boom during the Amanika Gold Rush when prospectors were eager to find the fastest route to gold fields. Although the trail is no longer used, Hubble Homestead still bustles with activity. Volunteers keep history alive through tours of heritage buildings. Perhaps the most interesting building is Hubble House. It was built by Al Hubble and he started in January of 1912 and it, it took him the larger part of the year to complete it. It's the style of an Ontario farmhouse, so it's a little fancier than what you would find, especially at that time period in this area of Prince George. You'll notice that the house has a summer kitchen attached to it. So that's um, something that was a little different. This uh, log cabin is a representation of what Al lived in originally with his wife Annie um, and her daughter Ada. And then when the new baby was born, that was four people to a small cabin. And that was, I think, one of the big reasons why the large White House was built as well. They were planning to expand the family. So after that, this log cabin was turned into a kitchen. Hubble Homestead also boasts many other attractions. One building that is a must-see is the General Store, which is still open for business. Hello. Hi. Um, there was 27 other families in the area, um, in addition to the Hubbles. So this store was used by them to buy items that they wouldn't normally be able to grow themselves. So that could include things like cheese or candy, stuff like that. Um, nails, I know, was a big one. <laughs> And um, I think at one point it actually also served as a post office as well. Whether visiting for the day or attending a special event, a trip to Hubble Homestead is sure to be a fun and historical learning experience. For Quality Assured Road Trip just north of Prince George, I'm Christina Dahl. Entertaining and informative, the Quality Assured Collision Road Trip. Weekends on Shaw TV. Always something new and exciting. So many places to explore, so many things to see, and so many ways to get involved. It's time for our Cultus Lake Big Summer Spotlight on local events. World of Dance is the largest international urban dance competition showcasing the country's top dance troops. The third annual Carnival del Sol is Vancouver's featured Latin American festival and part of the city's 125th anniversary events. Join the walk and support people living with ALS. Proceeds will go to support research and to support patient services provided by the ALS Society of BC. And the new don't miss on the local attraction scene, it's Cliff Walk here at Capilano Suspension Bridge. That's it for today's Express. We're going to leave you with a look at the local art scene, and we'll see you next time.